Uh, welcome back here today, Clay Golem. We're back in Foundry and we're looking at building, continuing to build the Fandelver and Below uh, campaign arc, adventure arc, whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> and in the last video, actually the last video was an add-on where we looked at background scaler and we imported our Ruins of Thunder Tree map and we used background scaler to do the grid. So, hurrah, if you haven't seen that one, you've managed to skip the laborious <laughs> um, minutes of me uh, trying to get the map lined up. That's all done now. Lovely jubbly. So here we are. All we've got is the, the map in here. And with that um, that that gridding all sorted. Uh, and I've got Haley on here just uh, mooching around. Okay, so we need to build Thunder, th thunder Tree. The thunder Tree's a reasonably large, got quite a bit of stuff going on. So this might take a while, we might end up doing it in two videos, but we should be able to whiz through a fair amount of this reasonably quickly. Uh, so what the heck is Thunder Tree about? So this is the ruins of an old, well, village. It's not very big, is it? Um, near Neverwinter. Uh, and it just says, in the wake of a natural disaster, a plague of strange zombies swept the area, killing or driving off those who survived. Um, most of the buildings have crumbled in the years since the town was abandoned, uh, and nature threatens to swallow the remains. Threatens to swallow the remains? It just will. <laughs> um, so it talks about the fact that the ruined buildings... Um, are basically empty shells with wall stone walls five to eight feet high their roofs have gone uh, piles of debris inside the walls um, that counts difficult terrain the intact buildings are run down ramshackled stoned cottages that are otherwise still standing wooden doors are stuck etc so some of these just looking at the map some of these uh, like if this one this one over here obviously looks quite ruined Whereas other ones like this look intact. So as we're going through, we'll just have a look, this, look at each of the descriptions for the buildings. Um, we'll build our journal as we go with our markers on it. Um, and just have a look to see whether we should be doing full intact walls, partial walls, etc. First of all, though, um, what I do want to do is look at lighting and stuff for this scene in general. Um, so if I right click and go to configure... Um, We've got our basic stuff here. Yep, that's all good. Uh, we did our grid. Not touching that anymore. <laughs> uh, lighting, token vision, yes. Fog exploration, yes. Because it's outside, I want to leave global illumination on. Okay, so that's all fine. Um, and ambience, I think I want to make it a bit foggy. I want this place to be a little bit, well, you know, it's full of undead and it's an old ruined town. I want to make it a little little bit creepy. Just, just to uh, give a different atmosphere, really. Um, so a bit of fog on there, that looks quite nice. Uh, and if I go to lighting, um, I want to I want to play with lighting for this one. So I'm going to make it dark. There we go. It fades out our light for us. So it's a nice dark map, um, but obviously we don't want it to be night time. So if I select old Haley here, you know she can't actually see very much at all, uh, and that's not really very playable. So I was just playing with this lighting here. So I've just created, you can top left hand corner, I created one light source. I made it a slightly yellow light, um, you know, sort of like sunlight type of light. Um, dim radius of 350, so dim it covers the entire village. Um, brightness only 150, so that comes out to about halfway across the map, just under um, where it's brighter. So you can see the top left of the map where the light source is, is much brighter than the bottom right of the map where it's much darker so we've got this sort of kind of gradient across here i've turned the light intensity down a fair bit um i've got no animations on there at all um and i've not played with with this apart from the usual constrained with walls we want so i think it just makes it again let's select Haley. i think again it just makes it a little bit more atmospheric um, they can see what they're doing. They don't need light sources and things, but it, it just makes it a bit gloomy with that fog and stuff. Um, I quite like it. That's what I'm going to go with for now. Okay, so let's start off by looking at some of the, the buildings here. Let's we'll start off with this one on the left, this square here. Um, we need to create a journal for this in Fandelva. I'm going to create a completely new journal called... Um, what is this place? Thunder Tree. <laughs> Thunder Tree. 
Uh, it's the ruins of Thunder Tree, but let's just go with Thunder Tree. That's fine. All right. So the first page we want to add is going to be a map location. Uh, and this la map location is called Westernmost Cottage. Okay, so I'm just uh, in the other window. I've got open the actual module itself um, so that I can see, um, you know, any of the details and things. And of course, I can just copy across anything that uh, that I sort of like need or feel that I need to copy across that's of interest. Uh, so description of this. This talks about there being two blight twigs hide among the weeds that flank the cottage's open doorway. Uh, passive check to see if they can find them. Da, 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 da. The blights remain perfectly still. They don't attack. So there's nothing else about this place at all. Uh, and we're just going to copy that in. I mean, to be honest, <clears throat> I don't probably don't really need it. But hey, you know, it's better to have it and not need it. Uh, right, okay, so we have a passive wisdom perception score. Now, how did we do the... Oh, blimey. How did I do the passive perception score? Can any of you remember? Not that you can tell me before I've done this. <laughs> I might have to uh, might have to pause the recording here for a second. Okay, so I'm back again. Um, I had to look up my own video where I wrote all of the uh, the things in there just to remind myself. So we wanted to do the passive one, didn't we? Um, and creates a horrible line with the whole party results is the one I want and it is in here we want a check um, perception oh no we don't need an equals for this one now what does the actual module say the perception check is uh, it says it right in front of me stupid boy perception of 13 okay so perception of 13 I'm not organized, am I? Totally not organized. A uh, passive, right? So that's how we make it different. So passive, close, close. All right, so I'm going to close that and just check that that is. There we go. Passive wisdom score, hover over it, and there it's given us our two um, active characters. It hasn't given Haley, Haley an active character because uh, while I've copied her onto there, she's like an NPC at the moment. Um, I've not added her into Boudicca's Bandits. Um, which is why she's not showing up when I do this. Okay, so good, that's working. Characters who have a uh, who have a check perception, thirteen passive wisdom uh, perception score. Does it actually read? It says passive wisdom perception. Get rid of that score of thirteen or higher. Spot the blights from up to ten feet away. Alternately, a character within 10 feet of the doorway can look for signs of danger and make a... So this is a live perception check rather than a passive one. So this is a skill. Um, it's ability based on wisdom. And the skill is perception. DC 13. Check. Spotting the blights on a successful check. Uh, the blights remain perfectly still. They do not attack anyone except in self-defense uh, and quickly come to the aid of other twig blights in area U2 if combat erupts there. Now, this is area U1, I believe. Just double check that and get myself really confused. It is. Okay, so now we've got this as U1. We can close this. Um, actually, what we need to do is to drag... I've got to remember how to do this. I drag it from here, don't I? There we go. That's how we do it. Okay. So that this is U1, this cottage over here. So we've got our passive wisdom there. Tells us whether they made it or not. Boudicca will spot them. The other one won't. Uh, and then we've got our active one if we need it. That's good. Lovely jubbly. Let's close that for the moment. Um, but of course we need to actually put those twig blights out. So twig blights. I did go through because twig blights aren't... Um, do you, if you remember we used that uh, DDB importer to bring in our characters and we could bring in a bunch of things let me just remind you for those of you uh, this DDB muncher um, which is really really good and we can bring in all the spells we can bring in all the items 
if we want to bring in monsters so this is bringing them in from D D beyond we need the patron account or to be running our own server um which i don't have a patron account um so we're doing things for free so it means i can't pull in those monsters direct from there which is fine so i was forced to create them and again you don't want to sit sit there watching me just create monsters again and again and again so i did already go through and i created these twig blights um, so straight from the module all I did I can't remember what I cloned to be honest I just cloned another monster and went through and edited it so I went through and updated their attributes um, gave them the appropriate skills that they needed down here I made sure they had the blind sight um, senses vulnerability to fire and immune to blind and deafened um, I adjusted their hit points to armor class etc um, I changed them to small plants um, and change their CR and things and uploaded a picture. Uh, I then went through and made sure they had a clear claw attack and their false appearance. Now false appearance came directly from the SRD. That was one of the monster features so that was nice and easy. Um, the only claw attack was a legendary claw attack so I did just go in and basically I just went in and edited it. Um, I didn't bother changing the description in details. It's got feature type, doesn't matter. It's one action for it um it's a melee weapon uh, i updated its damage and then it's piercing um made sure it had no effects and things and that's that's it okay so nice and easy didn't take too long to do and of course because i've got it over here now i can chuck it out as many times as i like Ta -da! now it does say that they are small rather than medium so the question is should i be making them smaller now technically i should are they called shambling mound that's what i used for it <laughs> that's one thing i do need to change oh dear um they're twig blights aren't they right i don't want to change it over there i want to change it over here because i don't want to have to change it every time do i now that's configure ownership just make sure actually i didn't check that make sure it's none for players um I can never remember how to change it over here but that's okay because I'm going to update this one twig blight that's what it is that's what we want the token to say um, that's fine uh, coordinates elevation happy with all of that that's fine don't mind uh, appearance hmm I don't want it to be that small I will make it perhaps 0.8 so it is smaller Yeah, let's make it 0.8, so it's smaller, but not maybe even 0.7. So it's smaller, but not tiny, tiny, because uh, it becomes difficult to see. Um, vision, don't worry about vision on these. I mean, I haven't got any vision, but that's fine. Detection modes, I'm not worried about that. Um, light source, no. Resources, always for owner. That's what I want. Okay, so now I've updated this one. Let's get rid of this one. What I should be able to do, double click, open this. And I should be able to click on token, um, which brings this one up. And this should say all the same. Okay. Um, now, that's not it. Was it over here? Right click, apply prototype token to image scene tokens. Hmm, no. I want to do it the other way around. There is a way of doing it. I know there's a way of doing it. Why have I forgotten how to do that? I want to make th make this the default token we do it with characters how bizarre it's not that important because i can just control shift and stick those out so there we go we've got them that's an easier way to do it i've updated one of them um control c to copy control v to paste and we've got them that's nice and simple let's do that all right so yeah they're kind of hovering around but there's not this bugger all in there um yeah they might go and investigate it do we want to do some walls for this? I think we'll do a few walls. Let's wall it off a little bit. Um, partially. Oops. No, not select. There we go. Um, partially because I would quite like my players to go and wander around the front. 
Okay, now you can see instantly one problem we've got with me having my light source the way it is, it instantly puts everything else in shadow that is not immediately that side of it. So that may not be the right way to do it, um, or it might be that I've just made the whole place a bit too dark. Once we start putting all these other walls up, it's potentially going to get a bit crazy um, with how dark everything is, so maybe that's not the right way to do it. Let's carry on. And let's let's see what we uh, see what we want to do as we move forward. All right. So the next area is going to be actually both of these together, um, and this is the blighted cottages. So let's go back to our uh, not into there. Um, where did I put it? Do, 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 do. Uh, I've got two now. That's the one I want. What is the other one? That's an old one. I'm going to get rid of. And this is the problem because we've looked at several different ways of doing stuff. I've now got some duplicate stuff. <laughs> right, let's get rid of that. We want another map location. What did I say this was called? The Blighted Cottages. Okay, let's smack that in. And this is area U2. A uh, bit of a description of these ones. Again, okay, nice and simple. A lot of these buildings are a bit repetitive and a bit boring, which isn't a problem because when something does happen and there is a nice surprise for them um, they're not necessarily ready for it which is good now this talks uh, I'm going to copy all of this lot in and paste this all in and then we can go through it on screen where you guys can read it okay so the undergrowth here conceals a deadly threat two twig blights lurking in the foliage uh, characters who let's leave a space characters have a passive wisdom so we need that passive wisdom again, don't we? Which was, can I remember it from when we just did it? Like five minutes ago. <laughs> Have a uh, square bracket, square bracket. Uh, and then it was, it was a check perception of um, 13 passive. I think that's all it was. or 13 or higher spot the blights up to okay, so okay so it's the same thing ultimately within okay i'm not going to keep repeating myself that's going to get silly uh these plants are hungry and will fight until destroyed um and it talks about stuff in area one now because we've already got this whoops a daisy we can copy area one and we can stick it in there so those will join the fray and we've got a treasure bit here i'll get to that in a moment all right so let's save that and just make sure this is working so here we are yeah we've got our passive perception which is fine uh, and join from the westernmost cottages so let's drag our u2 out here and just slap it down there that's fine now remember again so if i just rubble right click it's not globally visible all right so it's not going to be seen by the players now in this westernmost cottages bit let's edit that okay because this talks about this basically from the two houses they're going to support each other so now this one's from the blighted cottages and this one talks about from the westernmost cottages so uh, whereabouts actually are these twig blights um, it's probably not going to give us much more information than that does it um, but there are two of them two twig blights in fact what we could also do Again, just we don't need to do this really really don't need to do this this is mostly so uh, not everybody's watched every video which is understandable um, but just showing you how we can do this with the journal is we can literally drag and drop our monster into there and now it says overgrown conceals to a threat to twig blight and I can click on that and it will bring up the twig blight straight away which is really good so a nice little handy thing that we can do in the journal if we want to we now need to dump two twig blights out here the question is where do we want to dump them um i'm gonna dump one in there no i'm not i'm going to copy paste and paste and do it that way because that's just actually easier i'm going to stick that one in there uh, and i'm going to stick this one um, this one's going to be over here in fact that's no, not going to be inside i'm going to stick it down here instead under that bush there okay so they've got a bit of concealment harder to see etc uh i am going to go to my lighting and i'm going to make it daylight because it's going to be much much easier for you guys to uh 
to be able to see what's going on if I do that. There we go. Right, walls then. Uh, I think we can put some walls around here. I think that's perfectly acceptable. I mean, yes, they're ruins. Um, might leave a gap there where it actually looks like the wall has disappeared completely. Yep, uh, and again over here. Bosh. And it pretty much looks like the walls are reasonably well intact. Um, and those holes are where doors would be. So, yeah, a front door, back door, kind of. Well, this would be the main door onto the path here. And there's some kind of back door or something that is broken out there. Okay, so, good. We've got that. Let's have a quick check with Haley. Yeah, so it might be with that fog that we don't make it dark at all. And that might be, that shadows might just be perfectly enough in that way. Otherwise it made those shadows really, really deep, didn't it? But it makes this kind of spooky enough as it is. It's not spooky. It's not quite spooky. It's not quite what I'm going for. Okay, good. <clears throat> now, um, that's better. Good on Haley. Of course, you couldn't see the map pins. I had a moment there. <laughs> Now it does say here at the treasure at the bottom it's talking about treasure. Good old treasure. I've got to edit it before I can do that, you nana. Okay, so we can add treasure here. Now it talks about a merchant who once lived here hid a chest under the flagstone floor. A thorough search of the interior of the cottage and a successful here we go. And a successful Skill, <clears throat> ability equals intelligence. Skill equals investigation. DC, DC 10. Check reveals the old chest among the roots of a tree growing in the house. The chest contains and it's got a whole bunch of coins. Well, we've got a little thing we can do with this, haven't we? Because we've been looking at this. Now, this is the kind of thing where um, uh, RPG Time um, showed us the macro that he got written for him in ChatGTP. Now, go watch the video if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, it was only a couple of days ago. Um, and he had that macro that would reveal treasure uh, uh or uh, you know and then play an animation with it which is really kind of nice this is the kind of situation where you might choose to use that i'm not going to be that flamboyant um but we can still do it because i can still grab an item here and drag it out and i want to create a new pile so uh if you remember we we have done this um and we looked at this in one of the videos just creating standard item piles i'm going to configure this pile under other settings, I'm going to make this, shall I make it a container? It does say it's a chest, doesn't it? Let's make it a container. It's going to be closed. Yes, it is. Ah, yes, images. I need to find, I need to find for me personally, better images for this. Um, did I stick it under icons? No. Um, I'm sure I did stick some under there. I'll make, no, I didn't, I didn't. I used core data once. And I think I used their icons for containers. Um, let's use a chest. And let's use something. Um, I want like open and closed if I can. Um, maybe I might just be really simple with this one. Let's go with simple walnut. Okay. Now I'm not worried about this being open and closed all the time. So when it's open, I might just stick with the same image. So yeah, okay, in this instance, it's not actually going to show open, closed, etc. Um, doesn't matter, don't care. <laughs> I can go back and change them later if I want to. Um, and locked is irrelevant because I'm not going to have it locked at all. So it's going to use the same image regardless uh, and I don't need the sound. It would be nice perhaps to find sound at some point, but I can update that right now. And there we go, we've got a little, a little image icon now configuring piles again is there anything on the front i want um do that you have to be next to it that's fine i can inspect what's in there and that's not a problem 
um, on interact macro so that's where we can insert different things and stuff which is good like traps <clears throat> uh, delete when empty it's like yeah but let's just delete it when empty once you've raided it you've raided it the chest itself isn't worth very much um, uh, da, da, da. actually do you know what? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no, don't delete it when empty. They can leave the chest there. They might come back for it. They might decide to pick up the chest or something. Uh, in which case I can just hide it. All right. Update the item pile. Now, what actually was it in there? Did it say in the journal? So it said it had... Oh, actually, it's quite a lot of stuff. Add currency. So copper pieces, 1,400 copper, uh, 160 silver, and 90 gold. That's what it reckons is in there. Um, if I set that A gate to zero, uh, update the pile. There we go. Okay, so this item pile now just has gold in it. That's it. Lovely. Um, I don't want to show it to players at the moment. Uh, where, where, which corner shall I shove it in? I shove it in this corner down here. Okay, and I'm going to hide it. So what are these other options? Toggle it locked, toggle it closed. Yep, so it's closed. Uh, configure it, don't need to. I'm just going to hide it. So they can walk over it. They can absolutely just not know it's there at all unless they make that say that um, perception check. Then I can just unhide it. That's the simplest way to do it. It's not the most interactive, but I literally just need to go, oh yes, you find a chest. That's it. Whoopie do. And then they can all charge at it and raid it. And if they haven't already dealt with these twig blights, that's, it, that's going to upset them and off off goes that combat um <clears throat> talking of which because these tig blight twig blights are actually difficult to spot they ought to be hidden until they've made that right uh done walls for both of those no extra lighting required we've stuck in some treasure we've stuck in the gribblies we've stuck in the description that's nice. Um, the next one is this one up here. Now, this is actually an intact um, thing, isn't it? So this is known as the Brown House. So let's go back to our Thunder Tree journal. We want to add a page, go back to our map location. And this is the Brown House. So I'm assuming this house is actually brown or otherwise that's a ridiculous name for it. Uh, this is going to be U3. Um, so this, uh, it's not called the Brown House. <laughs> I just really, I just really misread that. It's called the Brown Horse. <laughs> so uh, this was formerly the Brown Horse, a tap room pub renowned for its excellent ale. Yeah, it was. Not anymore. Um, there we go. So you can see the description there. A weathered signboard by the door of this large building shows a faded image of a workhorse holding a flagon of ale. That's what, gripping it with its hoof. Uh, the building is sagging and dilapidated, but it's more intact than the ruins across the road. I assume it's meaning like these ruins down here. Okay, so that's quite nice. I'm just going to copy and paste again, just straight from the module. I'm not going to be editing as I go because, you know, life's too short for that. Um, let's pop it all in here. And this talks about ash zombies. See the ash zombies sidebar. Okay, so I have already looked at what the ash zombies are. Um, and apart from the fact that they disappear in a puff of ash. No, no they didn't disappear. When they die, they kind of leave this ashen uh, cloud behind. Apart from that, they're exactly normal zombies. Um, so I didn't create a new monster and call it ash zombies. Because it didn't seem worth bothering with. Um, what I can do is I can drag zombies in there just to you know keep you all happy um, and we can have have them like that they're just gonna be ash normal zombie so <clears throat> six of them lurk in the shadows in this building slumped against the walls or under the bar when living creatures enter they stir you know groan etc um, they pers they pursue any characters they see attacking until destroyed. Yep. The eastern half of the building, um, which is this bit over here, was the old common room, while the western portion held the kitchens and brewing vats. Old wooden turn stands, etc. So it doesn't talk about any kind of 
uh, any kind of um, you know treasure or anything in here so it literally is just a fight with six zombies so we can just shove them out um, and we can have one of them in the kitchen area okay so that's a really easy one to do let me to drag out my map note just so that uh, I remember which place this is actually that might not be a brilliant place for it I'm going to stick it to one side um, just thinking it's right by a door and that might be where players come in and out and then I'm in my own way aren't I so let's put some walls out easy peasy walls for this one let's start here I'm going to come down to here Oop. and then I didn't want to do that let's uh, start down the bottom here and then we just got one that's going across there okay so we need to do these doors so double click on this and say actually this is a door um, that is closed we can put a, uh, a creaky wooden sound on it all of the other um, all of the other walls here we're just leaving as default they restrict movement and light and sound uh, and sight which is fine it's only these we're changing to doors and we're just going to make all of these creaky because why not and if you don't know what I mean if you listen to the sound effect that's what happens when they open doors that's it well that was a really really simple one so we've already got three locations here done, which is quite nice. Um, no dramas. Um, let's do one more and then we'll uh, wrap this video up. And the one we're going to do is the next area, which is this one down here. Uh, and this is, so this is area four and this is the Druid's Watch Post. So this one's slightly different, uh, slightly different, slightly more interesting, I guess. Um, First of all, let's drag our thunder tree up into. Oh no, I wouldn't didn't want to do that. What am I doing? Muppet tree. I need to. That's chapter two. I need to create in Fandelva a new folder, which should be called chapter three, the spider's web. There we go. Okay, so do it. Thank you. Uh, so we're creating this new folder in here and this is where we should be having our um, thunder trees down there now we'll stick that in there okay uh, now we've got these other ones we did we looked at Wyvern Tor uh, that's just a map pin that's why that's there we looked at Old Owl Well but that's just a map pin in fact these again these are a bit redundant from the previous way that we did this so I'm just going to get rid of those um, and so that actually we only need to worry about what's in this folder here which is the thunder tree one and this is what happens when you change your mind on what you're doing um, with regard to mods and your methods of doing it and stuff and we've looked at lots of different ways of doing different things so I've just got some legacy bits I've probably totally messed something up doing that but there we go we'll fix it and if we can't fix it we have to get better won't we get good Okay, so this is a nice, easy little description for this one. It's a small house in better condition than some of the others, which is probably why the Druids decided to nick it. Um, let's put our line in, just so it breaks up the difference. Uh, and this is talking about um, Redoth, wherever his name is. Her name, I think, actually. Um, hanging out here. Uh, so Redoth makes camp when she visits thunder tree an elderly human woman yes it is and we've got her we made her as an npc pretty sure i did that didn't i i thought i had did i put her in the wrong place no hmm I mean, she should obviously be under R, so I don't know why I was just staring at it, not being able to find her. Uh, is that put under merchants? No. Uh, she's not under monsters, which is good, because she's not actually a monster. <laughs> How bizarre. I was sure I had done it. 
go mad. I mean, you know, that's no surprise, is it? <laughs> I haven't dropped it in there or something silly. Uh, yeah, going slightly bonkers. Okay, that's not a problem. We can we can easily do that. Um, let's just pick somebody who's just a normal... I mean, she's actually a druid, so we will need to do some skills and stuff for her. I'll drop her in a bit later. Let's finish what else we need to hear and understand what's going on first. Um, she doesn't care to receive visitors... She is reasonably hospitable. She's adept at staying away from the ash zombies that overrun the village, as well as avoiding the area's mutant plants. She knows the dangerous uh, that dangerous spiders lurk in the ruins at the base of the hill. Uh, blah, 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 blah. She's seen people in black masks and cloaks, the cultists, etc. And she knows things about the tower, which is all well and good. Um, but what have you done for me lately? <laughs> So let's copy in the rest of this. Um, done something hideous there, haven't I? No, it's all right. I'll sort that out. Yeah, it's just a bit of formatting thing. Okay, so. Uh, all right, that's all uh, normal. Good. Let's put a line in here just to separate this out. This is going to be the development. And this talks about, right. If the uh, this, I know, sorry, this is so small on the screen. Uh, if the characters ask about Cragmore Castle, so they could come here to ask about it. That's one of the links they've got. Uh, she hesitates to provide directions. She's a member of the Emerald Enclave in a widespread group of wilderness survivalists who preserve the natural order while rooting out unnatural threats. Yet yeah, very druid. Um, <clears throat> blah, 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 blah. If any of the characters appear to respect her position and beliefs, she tells them where to find the goblin stronghold. Otherwise, she offers a bargain. If the characters chase off Venom Fang, the dragon that is here, um, <clears throat> which we need to create it. Well, we've, I've got him. I've got the dragon monster, but we need to create him as Venom Fang when we get there. She'll provide directions. If they attack her for any reason, she transforms into a grey squirrel and hurries from the cottage through a crack in the wall. She hides in the woods until they leave. Um, her watch post contains nothing of value. Right, so this is the Druid watch post. Let's chuck it out here. Close that. Let's put some walls around it for her. Actually got doors, which is nice. Well, you know, on the scale of things. Let's make that a door. Uh, oh, gonna, they're all going to be creaky here. They're all old doors, even when you know most places haven't got doors. Okay, so the only thing we need to do is now slap her in. Like I say, I was fairly sure I had done that, and clearly I haven't. So let's just nick any one of these people we like. Uh, we're going to duplicate, double left click, and we're going to update this, uh, and this becomes... Uh, just make sure I've spelt her name right. Um, R E I D O F. I do off the druid. Um, I want to update this picture. As lovely as that one is, uh, I'm fairly sure I did create a picture for her, and I think that might be why where I was getting confused with um, you know with the various things. So is it in Fandelva? Is it in NPCs? Did I create her in here? Uh, da, da, da. That's the image. There we go. Blech. So uh, let's unlock that and zoom that in a bit. Lovely. And pull that image across. Just get rid of that one. We don't need it. Put you behind the other one. Zoom you in a bit. And this is just the image directly from the module, this one. I haven't done anything special. I didn't generate that one with AI or anything like that. Uh, so we've got her. Um, we probably ought to have a bit closer look at what her, what she can do, though. Hey, um, mm, doesn't give us a stat block for her. So I'm going to leave her as is. I mean, it just basically says if they attack her, she runs away. But it's not simple as that, is it? Um, <laughs> that's risky because guarantee your players will do something that makes that non-logical that she just manages to escape I mean 
really can she has a f completely free takes no time at all action change into a squirrel and flee no some git's going to cast spider web or entangle or fireball we will need some stats stats for her so we can make those up and do those uh, i'm going to do those off camera because you know it's making a character that's all it is um, I'm just going to literally go through and update those stats and things. If this was going to be a major returning character, then I would create them in D&D Beyond and port them in, because that way I can grow them and move them on. Uh, the same as we did with Lano, um, the glass staff, uh, and we've done with Nesnar, and just created them as more robust characters. They will continue to encounter them as they go on, very possibly. Unless they manage to kill Lano, of course, and they decide to call, kill Nesnar. But those are my characters they will probably take forward if they don't kill them. All right. Now we've created her here. Um, just ch double check her configuring ownership. Good. Players can't see her. Let's chuck her out and make sure that uh, we've got the wrong thing on the token. Yep. This is going to say Helia. Of course it is. And that's fine. I was expecting that. R E D. Uh, R E I Radoth. Uh, that will do. Uh, it sets her as hostile. I'm just going to put her as neutral. Uh, appearance. Yeah, we've got the right token. Vision. We don't need to worry about any of that. That's all good. Update. There she is. Hovering around. And she's hovering around inside here when the players turn up. Um, and she's behind those closed doors. which you can hear when we actually open those doors, which is good. Okay, so let's just quickly grab Haley and make sure that our walls are working as expected. If we wander down this path, we can't see those twig blights. I know we can vaguely see them. That's because we're in the DM though. Um, but they can walk, she can walk around here, open that door, pretend we didn't see that. <laughs> and then we can run off uh, down this side, we can come into this into this room here. Um, yeah, we can't see any twig blights. They're all hidden, which is good. If we come up here and come into this room, we can't actually see the chest that says A-gate. That's something I want to change. Uh, we come down here. It's not until we go into the room that we can see it. So that's, that's all working exactly as we want, and it's worth checking these things. Just whizzer back over there. And so the only thing I saw there that was a bit slightly frustrating is that's called agate. Um, so let's uh, let's change that. Just call it hidden chest. There we go. No problem. And I don't think the player is going to see that at any point anyway. And even if they double click on it, uh, it says default item pile. I'm wondering if we not the t not the chest, please. Thank you. Um, when I right click, double right click on, double right click, get my fingers to work. Uh, it's kind of saying represented anchor um, actor is this, which is fine because I've called it default item pile. Yeah, we'll just leave it as that. That's fine. That's not a problem. Players can't see it anyway. All right. So, a bit of a babble. Um, Thunder tree. So we've already got four bits done. Um, some of these buildings are pretty much empty and just a bit of a repetition repetition of what we've already done. Uh, next things to do is just continue on with the uh, the blighted farmhouse, the ruined store, the old tower, which is a significant um, area, um, and then the rest of these buildings and uh, doing something with uh, Radoth here and updating that character. So we'll do that in the next video. Um, hopefully one more video and we'll have this one done. It might take three because there is a fair bit here, but I think we've broken the back of it. Thanks for watching, guys. You take care.